Good evening. It is a pleasure to welcome you to these 153rd commencement exercises for the Attleboro High School class of 2022. While they're getting seated, let's give the band a band a round of applause again. <laughs> to begin, I would ask that you please join me in a moment of silence. The class of 2022 lost a friend, classmate, and teammate when Justin Parker passed away. Also, many of us have lost loved ones during this class's four-year tenure. May they all rest in peace. Thank you. Now the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by our senior choir under the direction of Mr. Gary Hyman. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the Please be seated. Let's give the members of the choir a warm round of applause as they get their seats. Thank you. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to welcome several honored guests I would ask that you please hold your applause. On behalf of Representative Jim Hawkins, we have Legislative Director Tara Major, Mayor of the City of Attleboro, Mr. Paul Hero, School Committee members, Vice Chairperson Rob Geddes, Secretary William Larson, Shannon Johnson, Lynn Porto, Scott Domenici, and Jim Storrs. Municipal Council President Jay Delisio. Municipal Councilors Laura Dolan and Ty Waterman. Superintendent of the Attleboro Public Schools, Mr. David Sawyer. Other members of the Central Office Leadership Team, Lori Regan, Mark Furtado, Yvonne Medeiros, and Joanne De Palma. The Attleboro High School Administration and Senior Class Staff. Assistant Principal Colleen Neslin, Assistant Principal Kevin Gorman, Career and Technical Education Director Jeremy Gay, representing the Network Program Robbie Willemure, representing Attleboro Community Academy Principal Gene Hickox, representing Attleboro Virtual Academy Principal Joseph Connor, Events Manager Angela Larson. Senior Class Advisors, Caitlin Andrade and Aaron Feeney. Members of the Attleboro High School faculty, building administrators and faculty from all of the Attleboro Public Schools, friends and family, and most importantly, the graduates of the Class of 2022. Welcome. I am so proud to stand before you tonight to celebrate this 153rd graduating class of our Blue Pride community. I'd like to thank all of our honored guests, parents, family, and friends for your presence here tonight. 
The faculty, staff, and I join everyone tonight in celebration of you. We are also joined tonight by our partners in your educational success, the administrative teams and educators from our APS schools who have prepared you so well. Please join me in thanking them for helping you through this journey. Thank you. Our first speaker tonight was selected as the salutatorian of the Attleboro High School class of 2022. Please join me in welcoming John Bluen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Attleboro High School Class of 2022 graduation ceremony. At such a noteworthy milestone like this, it's important to give gratitude to those that made it possible. First, thank you to all the families. It is you who instilled the values that helped us get to where we are today. Second, thanks to all the friends. You guys were the ones standing by our sides, always supporting us. And finally, Thanks to all the teachers, staff, and coaches. While some of you might underestimate the impact you had on all of us, know that we will remember your lessons forever. But today is all about the graduates. I am thankful to have been able to work alongside you all for the past four years, and for some of you, much longer. The class of 2022 truly is a special class, as we are the last group to ever graduate from this historic high school building. This means that the walls of the school are literally being torn down around us as we assemble here today. Likewise, we too have fallen down a lot ourselves, as evidenced by us losing in four consecutive pep rallies. But really, it would be impossible to talk about the challenges we faced in the last four years without mentioning the pandemic. It took from us all the normalcy of life and school that we'd ever known. As classes went remote, remote school sports were postponed and school events were canceled. For many of us, this was a time of hopelessness and uncertainty. But like any challenge has ever done, it forced us to adapt and rebuild. As we went from fully remote to hybrid learning, then transitioning back to the entire student body in-person learning, we took it in stride. We were happy to be back and we now had a greater appreciation for life. If we learn anything from the pandemic though, it's the importance of getting back up when you get knocked down. Just as the walls of the old school are coming down, those of the new school are going up, stretching to new heights. Just two years ago, it seemed like everything we had been working for our entire lives had just been pummeled to the ground. Despite all that was taken away from us, we were determined to make our senior year one that makes up for the year and a half we missed. We never gave up in what a year we had. First off, we were able to hold all the fun events that make these times so memorable. Homecoming, the prom, the pep rally, senior week, just to name a few, we're back and are now here to stay. We also had a lot of success. Nine of our sports teams qualified for the state playoffs. The boys track and swim teams brought the first championships to Attleboro since 2014, and the cheerleaders found success on the national stage. The band put on some phenomenal concerts all year, and they ended up achieving gold medals at various competitions. CTE students shined at Skills USA districts and state competitions, with the drama club creating some of their best productions yet as well. But amidst all of these incredible feats is one that every one of us is able to share together. Just you being here today, sitting in those seats, is a remarkable accomplishment. No matter the circumstances, you made it here today, and you never gave up. Cherish these moments forever. So just as the construction moves forward on the transition to the new high school, we too have moved forward. Instead of letting this commotion get in our way, we look to this transition as a symbol of progress, a linkage between all who have walked the halls of this building and all who will walk the halls of the next. But most of all, a sacrifice of leaving behind something good for the chance to achieve something greater. Forever, generations across Attleboro will be connected by this rebirth, 
and the class of 2022 is the bridge between new and old. We're turning the page, not just as a class, but as a community. Today marks the last time that this entire class will gather in the same spot all together for whatever comes next, college, career, military, or some other endeavor, we are going out into a big and daunting world. Just like our building, you too will embark on a period of magnificent change. We have learned to rebuild once, and we can do it again, knowing that even when things don't go our way, we can emerge stronger than before, we keep persisting. For these next few years, as we venture off on our different paths, I encourage you all to do the same thing. Challenge yourself. Never underestimate what you can do. Don't be afraid of failure. But above all else, never give up. And surely, no matter where you go, you will do great things. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Graduates, in so many ways, tonight is the culmination of your growth, perseverance, and success. But your real commencement begins later this evening when you officially become Attleboro High School alumni, a moniker that is an honor, but more importantly, a responsibility. I'd like to take one last opportunity to share some advice and offer encouragement before you leave this campus with the distinction of being the last class to graduate from 100 Rathman Willard Drive before we move to one Blue Pride Way this summer. I thought long and hard about how I could capture the essence of your class and I remembered a great story that I feel is fitting. An elderly Irish woman had two large pots, each hung on the ends of a pole which she carried across her neck as she went each day to a local stream to get water for her family. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. Each day, at the end of that long walk from the stream to the house, the cracked pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily, with the woman bringing home only one and a half pots of water. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, but the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfections and miserable that it could only do half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, the cracked pot finally spoke to the woman one day by the stream. I'm ashamed of myself because the crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. The old woman paused and smiled and said, did you notice that there are flowers on your side of the path? while the perfect pot side is barren. That's because I've always known your flaw. So I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day when we walk back home, you nourish and sustain them. For two years, I've been able to pick beautiful flowers to decorate our table. Without you being just the way you are, there would, no be, there would be no beauty to grace this house. Each of us has our own unique flaws, but the cracks and flaws that we have make our lives together so very interesting and rewarding. You just need to take each person for who they are and look for the good in them. But also more importantly, you have to take the time to look for the good in yourself. Do not let others' immature judgment of your imperfections cloud the goodness and kindness that is deep inside of you. Many people accomplish so many wonderful things, but unfortunately, petty people get caught up in trivial flaws. Even though you have many cracks and flaws, you have nourished the lives of your teachers, families, and friends. You have made us better. You have given us a gift. I know that each one of you will pursue your own unique path when you leave Attleboro High School. And I can only hope and pray that your journey is directed by love and reverence towards love and reverence. Tonight is a milestone on your journey, a time to look where you've been and glance ahead to where you're going. You have arrived at the wonderful, perhaps terrifying moment where you must be your own guide. This may seem like a scary thought, but I encourage you to not let it be. 
While it is true that you are embarking on a new path, where you are headed is deeply rooted in where you have already been. You have journeyed these some 18 years surrounded by the love and support of your parents, teachers, faculty, and friends, all of whom have helped shape you into the person that you are today. These influences are ones that will ground you and inspire you as you make decisions about your future, as you decide what path of your own to pursue. Be mindful of the experiences and the relationships that have shaped you into the person that you are today and be thankful for them. Reflect on the strength of your formation, a process with many contributors and a central element of pride. Pride in who we are as a school, as a district, and as a city. That building is a huge testament to your legacy. You made our residents believe in Blue Pride and its infectious impact made the vote in 2018 go in our favor. I am confident that your education in Attleboro has challenged and supported you, made you intellectually competent and curious, made you loving and open, and furthered your relationship with others. You are ready to journey into the greater world and transform it into something more just and compassionate. Sadly, we've lost much of the social justice that our world needs today. Undoubtedly, your path will be difficult at times, and when it is, listen to the voice deep inside of you, the one formed by your family, your friends, and your education. Keep your belief in yourself close, not only for comfort, but also as your guide. It will always point you in the right direction. Being true to yourself means being true to those who have shaped and guided you. In these moments of indecision, know that you are never alone. When it is difficult to find your way, the strength of those who have brought you this far will be your strength moving forward. May the foundations that you've received in these 12 plus years remind you to be proud of your roots, to stick to the path that leads to success. The path you embark on later this evening as graduates of Attleboro High School holds infinite promise you will use those gifts and talents to influence our world as teachers, soldiers, doctors, engineers, businessmen, and women. I am confident that your parents, our teachers, and all of you that are guided to be here tonight have prepared you for these successes, but they've also opened a different perspective on how to define success. Love to write more than you want to be a writer love to heal more than you want to be a doctor, and love to want to teach more than you want to be a teacher. Strive to live a life of passion, joy, and service with an openness to the call of your heart. That way, you will walk with love for what you do and reverence for why you do it. The very reason why the windshield is always bigger than the rearview mirror. See the big picture rather than focus on the minor details of the past. As Jack mentioned, in a matter of minutes, it is unlikely that your entire class will ever be together in one place again. However, it is my hope that with the influence of personal responsibility instilled in you from Attleboro High School, you will all be together as you walk with confidence down your individual paths. During these troubling times, I want to share one more reason why this place is the place to be. There is a quote from civil rights activist, Audre Lorde, who said, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. As a society and specifically as a school, we have a lot of progress still to be made in this realm. But at Attleboro High School and in this district, we recognize that and we are trying. That is what makes me proud to have been a parent in this school and humbled to be your principal. So to you, class of 2022, on behalf of the leaders here tonight with me and your family and supporters in the stands, we extend our gratitude for making sense of the past, bringing peace for today and giving us hope for tomorrow. In closing, 
<clears throat> I want to say that tonight certainly isn't about me, but I, I would be remiss if at my last Attleboro graduation as principal that I did not thank all of you, students, families, community, faculty, and staff for a tremendous 10 years. It has been an absolute blessing to represent this city, and I will always cherish my time here and consider it home. Thank you. <clears throat> And now please join me in welcoming the mayor of the city of Attleboro, Mr. Paul Hero. Hello, it's an honor to be part of your high school graduation ceremony. This is a wonderful milestone for all of you. I'm proud of all of you. All of you who are graduating are our hope for a nice future. You have all been through a lot. During your time as student, you have lost the use of some of the sports fields to the development of the new high school. Because of a global pandemic, you lost out on spending time with your classmates before you part ways. It's also been a tough time to be a high school student. There are school shootings in other places in the country. You experience bullying and you had a lot to worry about with everything you put on the internet. But through all these challenges, you prevailed. You graduated high school because you are strong, resilient, and committed to a life of success. There will be many paths taken by each of you as graduates. You will go off to do different things, but no matter what you do, do it with pride, do it with excitement, and do it with honesty and integrity and do it so that when you look back on your life, you will say that your life mattered. I graduated from Attleboro High School in class in 1995. My valedictorian told of a Calvin and Hobbes story that went something like this. Calvin said to Hobbes, we should live for the moment because one day you could walk on the road, wham, you're hit by a truck, you're dead. What do you say about that? Hobbes responded, you should look down the road. That's life, it's balancing living for the moment and looking down the road. Before you part ways with your classmates, tell your friends that they are appreciated for being good to you. Before you leave, say sorry if you hurt someone, one of your classmates. Thank a teacher for trying to make a difference in your life. Tell your mom and dad that you love them for what they have given you, and you're thankful for everything they've done. No matter what each of you do after graduation, I have two requests. Come back and visit your teachers. Let them know that you appreciate their time with you. Number two, my second request is that you be honest with yourself, honest with others, and try your hardest with whatever you do. That second bit was actually some advice that my geometry teacher, Mr. Hanowich, gave back when I was here in 1994. Your classmates, your teachers, and this city will be looking forward to hearing great things about you. We hope that you will have an exciting life, and we wish you success in all of your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> and now, please join me in welcoming the Superintendent of the Attleboro Public Schools, Mr. David Sawyer. Good evening. High school graduation remains one of modern life's enduring milestones, signifying the end of a long journey charted across 13 years of these young lives assembled here on this field today. Most of us remember little of a time before schooling, and the conclusion of our formative years is symbolized by the trip across this dais on toward a life less clearly de defined. For those who earn a high school diploma, the occasion is one of personal promise brimming with possibilities. Each individual here has made it to this common finish by way of their own unique path 
one that now will diverge in ways both intended and unanticipated. All who share the experience can ponder who they were and who they would become wherever cleaved by this singular moment. But for the educators here today, commencement is not a once in a lifetime occurrence. Rather, it is something we experience annually as part of an ongoing cycle that began here in Attleboro over a century and a half ago. While you should all reflect now on the significance of your personal achievements, the value of the struggles you endured to earn them, and the course you will now take to capitalize on the opportunities you have been afforded, as superintendent, I am prompted to consider what exactly it is we are trying to accomplish with a compulsory system that culminates in this time-honored ceremony. Ultimately, I need to ask, what is the purpose of education? Some might feel that the answer should be obvious, but it seems less so to me with each passing year. Historically, knowledge was a scarce and valuable commodity, and educated people were entrusted with ensuring that the hard-fought lessons extracted from an unforgiving world by previous generations were preserved and shared with the next. This function seems less relevant in an information age where everyone carries around in their pockets all the learning in the world. Later on, schools were redesigned to support the needs of an industrial society, to sort managers from workers and prepare all of them for the demands of factory life. Again, these objectives don't match the realities of our day. So what are we here to do? What is the value of an education in 2022? An old adage proclaims that education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. The implied wisdom there within is twofold. First, we must look beyond what school might seem to be about, because one of life's worst keep secrets is that much of what we teach is not remembered in the end. More crucially, by focusing on what remains after all of that forgetting, we can conceive of education as the lessons that stay with us, those that still matter long after the test. And inherent in this conception is the suggestion that education is really about the learning that will serve us in time to still to come. Of course, it's hardly bold to claim that our purpose is to prepare students for the future, but increasingly, it is a future that changes too quickly to accurately predict what will still be true even a few short years from now. Nevertheless, if we are not here to prepare students for success in the yet determined world they will someday inhabit, then our efforts are merely a fruitless and self-serving exercise. So how does any educational institution prepare people for a fast-changing and therefore unpredictable future? It seems to me that the answer is to focus on that which does not change. In doing so, the results will be relevant, come what may. And so the deeper question becomes on what can we count on not to be different? I would argue that the obvious constant in this ever unfolding human drama we call history is the humans themselves. And while our understanding of our nature continues to evolve, we have known a great deal about what might matter most since the days of antiquity. Perhaps a renewed consideration for these well-worn insights can better prepare our children for a world with few other certainties. So what centuries-old wisdom might serve as the education that remains after everything else recedes? Fundamentally, it is that as people, we are flawed, and an understanding of our shortcomings is the best insurance against falling prey to the traps they lay for all of us. As summarized recently by the journalist Catherine Mangu Ward, humans get stuff wrong. We do it all the time. We're biased, and blind, and overconfident. We're bad at paying attention and terrible at remembering. We're prone to constructing self-serving narratives after the fact, and worse, we often convince ourselves they are true. We're slightly better at identifying these distortions in others than we are in our own thinking, but not by much. And we tend to attribute others' mistakes to malice, even as we attribute our own to well-intentioned error. For eons, philosophers and poets have been making these same observations, and current science seems to strength only strengthen their validity. Maybe we need to reclaim our appreciation for these fundamental truths about our shared humanity. A healthy skepticism regarding not just the arguments of others, but more vitally our own beliefs, no matter how cherished they might be, is the essence of an educated perspective. The implications of its absence in our world today besiege us every day. As the leader of an institution that reflects the largest society it serves, I regularly find myself embroiled in the many controversies of our time. 
I am here to report to you that you are entering a world that is more politically divided than any other in my time here on Earth. There are many theories as to why we seem to be so at odds with one another. Once a complex patchwork of widely varying ways of life, stitched to loosely together by shared, shared ideals, and a cautious commitment to the federal republic that binds us as one, much of our country is now reorganizing into two hostile camps entirely dedicated to the opposition of the other. Those of us still clinging to the middle ground are continuously pressured to pick a side, to elevate one dogma as an undeniable truth, and in doing so, to reduce any opposing views to the least favorable interpretation of the motivations beneath. I encourage all of you to remain strong and to do no such thing. The enemy is not our neighbors who happen to see the world different. No, it is the zealotry that turns us against one another by demanding fealty to a cause over the careful contemplation by one's reason. What starts as a well-intentioned attempt to address some concerns, extremism twists into an intolerance for other notions of the problem or consideration for other possible solutions. Ideology values loyalty over autonomy, allegiance over truth. This is the slippery slope to authoritarianism, a devil's bargain that poses an existential threat to the principles upon which this country was established. We have faced other iterations of this proposition in our history before, and we as a people have consistently chosen the messy progress of our democratic system over the promise of order and safety by some other means. Our own state constitution enshrined the notion, shared by the architects of our nation, that the education of the citizenry, citizenry is necessary for the preservation of their rights and liberties. Freedom is a precious thing, and we still have a long way to go to fully deliver on the aspirational rhetoric of our founding narratives that is the center of the American project. And so education needs to be the development of the intellectual faculties that empower people to participate in the system that provides the only known check on the ambitions of any interest who believe the world would be much better off with the levers of power firmly in their hands. Remembering how wrong we often are is the best bulwark against any such usurpation. So then why are we here today? First and foremost, we join together as a community united around education to celebrate your accomplishments. Congratulations to each of you. Welcome to adulthood. We are also here in affirmation of our collective confidence in the vision of the world we are attempting to create. Parents are obviously concerned about the schools for the well-being of their children, but our society invests in education for the welfare of us all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Now I'd like to welcome Student Council President Katerina Treeb, who will facilitate the passing of the time key. Ella Lynch Bartek, President of the Class of 2022, will present the time key to President Emily Dunley of the Class of 2023. This key signifies the passion, passing of time, and the continuation of all AHS tradition. It is now my pleasure to present the prestigious Metcalf Awards. The Metcalf Awards originated in 1919 as the Helen W. Metcalf Prize of $5, presented in memory of a former English teacher at Attleboro High School, Miss Helen W. Metcalf, who was one of the founders of the Pyrian Club. In appreciation of this remembrance of his sister, Lewis Metcalf set aside a trust fund to provide for these awards. The very first Metcalf Prize was awarded to a member of the graduating class 
who had the highest average for three years' work in English. Now, these prestigious Metcalf Awards are presented at Attleboro High School for all areas of academic excellence, ranging from $750 to $1,000. We now present the Metcalf Awards for the class of 2022. Please come forward when your name is called. The Metcalf Award in English is presented to Neil Chase. The Metcalf Award in Mathematics is presented to Christian Dame. The Metcalf Award in Science is presented to Trinity Harrison. The Metcalf Award in Social Studies is presented to Saharla Youssef. The Metcalf Award in World Languages is presented to John Bluen. And the final Metcalf Award for Academic Excellence is presented to Ella Lynch Bartek. Um, don't go very far. Now, please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of the Attleboro High School class of 2022, Ella Lynch Bartek. First off, though it has already been said many times and will continue to be said, congratulations. Although this is a day for us graduates, I am certain that our experience would not have been the same without the help of others. To whomever that is, for each of us, I thank you. Because whether we said it or not, or knew it or not, in some way, you helped us. In all likelihood, this statement applies to several people, big and small, so know that it is not lost on us. Today is a culmination of so many late nights and long days and should rightfully be celebrated. Having said that, I believe our four years in high school need no introduction. Everyone here has lived through what has notoriously been deemed challenging times, so I do not need to explain how the most unique of situations quickly became our daily reality. The memory of March 13, 2020 remains as though it were yesterday. The snow day-like excitement to have a week off of school feels shockingly nostalgic. Between then and now, we have laughed through Google Meet calls, shivered through homecoming on the turf, and made memories over computer screens. And yet there is something extraordinary about surviving the last few years as a high school student. It is said that high school shapes you and is where you grow exponentially as a person. So what happens when this period of growth is halted and in complete disruption? When in this time, you are expected to ask so many questions and no one has the answer because two, they are just trying to find their footing. 
Because typical high school is supposed to prepare you for life, and typical high school came to a screeching halt, many believe we have lost this valuable preparation. And yet, I believe we are in fact the most prepared class for life. Our individual and collective stories support this belief with astounding evidence. We are uniquely able to construct and adapt to face an unprecedented future. In times of turmoil and breaking news, unfamiliarity has become familiar. And while it certainly might not have been graceful nor empowering to go through, we did all grow from it because we are all here about to graduate. At the drop of a hat, all of our plans change. We earned most of this diploma through a computer. There were no dances, sports, or celebrations to look forward to. We had to decipher smiles under mass faces and had small talk six feet apart. But we became resilient, flexible, creative, and made humor out of hardship. Through chaos and confusion, in the end, it was tenacity and strength that persevered. That, these skills, are what make for success and preparation in reality. And by this standard, we have the groundwork to navigate our futures. Ultimately, surviving the pandemic did not do this, but rather growing through it did. We watched AHS Yes signs turn into the dirt-covered construction grounds, which now house a state-of-the-art high school that will soon be the center of learning for so many. This new high school's timing speaks volumes for the future of us students and our community. Attleboro High School is a unique place to receive an education because our school is truly a microcosm of the world, which is particularly exceptional. The background of the students covers a multitude of characteristics, and yet there is commonality. We reminisce over the same experiences, classes, and community. To have this, despite all the differences, cannot be taught, but rather is only gained through experience. We will take the strengths of Attleboro, the adaptability and persistence we gathered to flourish individually and benefit others. So I say again, thank you and congratulations, because even though freshman orientation could never have prepared us, we are here today graduating much better off than we were four years ago. We are a class defined not only by these unprecedented years, but also the small moments that fell in between. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. And now, Assistant Principal Ms. Colleen Neslin will make the announcement of the graduates. Diplomas will be presented by members of the Attleboro School Committee and Attleboro's Municipal Council. Mrs. Johnson, please come up to present diplomas. Katerina Christine Treeb. Ella Margaret Lynch Bartek. Riley Tara Moulton. Amelia Rose Westwater. Trinity Rose Harrison. John Christopher Lewin. Maya Lu Guang Alho.
John Robert Aruda. Anna Nicole Arsenal. Mrs. Johnson, please step aside for one. Mr. Domenici, please come up to present the next diploma. Jameson Meyer Block. Emma Carmen Boss. Jason William Brewster. Chelsea Elizabeth Brown. Ryan Daniel Brown. Caroline Mary Butler. Lee Hasselbaum Castevens. Neil Patrick Chase. Marissa Ray Conroy. Olivia Michelle Cook. Angela Mackenzie Cooney. Jaden Angeli Cruz. Christian David Dame. Gina Dow. Ryan Patrick Dennehy. Madison Ellen Durick. Kelsey Lynn Elliott. Noah Michael Estramera. Ethan Richard Gatoni. Paulina Talvery Hem. Christopher Holcomb. Yeah. Ethan Christopher Johnson. Josephine Madeline Johnson. Tina Lamb. Michaela Christina Lamoro. Victoria Rose Ledoux. Christopher Umberto Leonardo. Sean Glenn Marshall. Yeah, 
Amber Lynn Massey. Diana Matson MacArthur. Sarah Maeve McMahon. Nora Nasa. Brenna Ashlyn O'Connell. Hannah Andrzejczyk. Abigail Ann Plisga. Megan Ann Priestley. Brendan James Raymond. Allison Beth Rabello. Brianna Andrea Ruano. Audrey Abella Sears. Jacob Steven Struminski. Ethan Patrick Sylvia. Aramar Torres Batista. Caitlin Foster Vieira. Corinne Victoria Whiting. Saharla Adam Yusuf. Liam Michael Carey. Mitchell Martin Skokulis. Selena Wyman. Connor Michael Adima. Alex Daniel Aguilar. Ursi Giel Aguilar. Genesis Nohemi Aguilar. Jarrell Jesse. Alexander Isha Altaf Arnold Chia Agosi Amadi
Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Mr. Domenici, please come up to present diplomas. Daisy Chisholm Amadi. Ellie Grace Amaral. John Paul Antonangeli. Olua Mayawa, Similu Lua, Jacob Aremu. Matthew John Ehrenberg. Morgan Kimberly Badger. Isabella Estefania Baez. Rhea Lee Bezier. Juliana Teresa Baldani. Delia Jacqueline Barthel. Jason Patrick Battisti. Chad Henry Bopin. Eva Jose Bopin. George David Braganza Jr. Ryan Alexander Betts. Francis Joseph Bebo. Liam Sheridan Bishkoff. Caitlin Elizabeth Vizier. Nathan Michael Blazik. Lillian Catherine Bodeker. Gabriella Joel Bullduck. Grant Richard Bonifant. Michael Stephen Bonina. Delaney Hope Bostic. Rebecca Linda Boudreau. Zachary Tyler Borsier. William Christopher Bose. Julia Kate Bozzi.
William Todd Brewer. Emma Lynn Briggs. Jack Henry Brightman. Kaylin Judith Brousseau. Lillian Scott Brown. Jope Win Tan Boy Anthony James Burns Sean Kenneth Burtwell Nikita Cabral Cameron Michael Pace Olivia Karen Calderon Sydney Olivia Cargill Elizabeth Carling Brad Stephen Carlson Sophia Grace Carlson Jacqueline Mackenzie Carroll Christopher Castro Via Senor Rochelle Marie Chamberlain Zubin Shahzad Chikliwala Craig Anthony Chin the second Linda Eliza Chinchilla Ellie Rose Churchill Paxton James Cloud Abby Ricky Cloutier Kaylin Michelle Coleman Landon Hunter Coleman Keegan Patrick Conley Thomas Peter Conlon Trevor Joshua Parado Caden Joseph Costa
Nick Crandall. Jordan Ashley Croto. Shane Michael Croto. Thank you, Mr. Domenici. Mr. Geddes, Vice Chairperson Geddes, please come up to present diplomas. Pam Thomas Kuna. Alexander Joseph DaCosta. Athanasia Christina Dafoulis. Allison Grace Daniel. Mia Rose Davila. Zachariah Joseph De La Cruz. Hannah Elizabeth Delfino. Caleb DeMello. Raphael Joseph DeMello. Susanna Maria DeMello. Allison Dennehy. Mohammed Diallo. Mark Anthony DeFlaminis Jr. Rayan Elizabeth Dillon. Kelly Rose Doherty. Mr. Geddes, please step aside for one. Mrs. Laura Dolan, please come to present the next diploma. Nathaniel Thomas Dolan. Zachary Melvin Dorrance. Jayla Destiny Douglas. Tyler John Drape. Damon Jeffrey Dugan. Brady Francis Dumont. Hayden Maurice Duquette. Angelique Julia Duran. Michael Dutremble. Joseph Michael Early III. Madison Elizabeth Ellis. Woo! 
Carly Jade Evans. Shane Alexander Evans. Jaden Dermont Evora. Richard Fagerberg. Amin Farina. Zachary Michael Ferreira. Ryan Michael Field. Autumn Marie Fisher. Emma Marie Fleming. Mario Fonseca. Jacob Thomas Borrett. Colin Michael Forte. Logan Christopher Horton. Pierre Junior Fortune. Joseph Francois Annabel. Joshua Tyler Freitas. Lillian Rose Royo. Alyssa Ann Furtado. Blake Robert Garzaro. Nathan Everett George. Bryson Garrity. Javari Gilzine. Grace Gloria Girardi. Ryan Thomas Leeson. Michelle Rocio Gomez. Is it going to like blow? <laughs> Tyler David Gonzalez. Go street, <laughs> Megan Catherine Gordon. Kelsey Diane Gorman.
Ethan Alexander Grant. Morgan Ann Gravel. Ronnie Ricky Gregor. Aisa Chantel Guzman. Mackenzie Lynn Gush. Ava James Haggerty. Allison Michelle Haig. Kean Michal Hamel Kelleher. Philip James Hannafin. Mr. Geddes, can you step aside for one, please, while Mr. Domenici comes back up? Connor John Hanrahan. Matthew Frederick Harbour. Alvin Frank Harrison Jr. Alexander Sean Harrop. Hayden Michael Hagerty. James Edward Hill. <laughs> Olivia Ann Hillman. <laughs> Lily Grace Hinton. Kyra Renee Hirsch. Benjamin Jeffrey Hawkwater. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Mr. Larson, please come up to present diplomas. Evan Rocco Poole. Chris Jerome Hovagimian. Jaden Elizabeth Hoyt. Nathan Vernon Hunter Evans. Jaden Anthony Iaruso. Alexandra Patricia Insani. Joseph Paul Jasmine.
Javeria Javeria. Mark Carey, Jean. Ariel, Bianca, Jean Baptiste. Nathan, Christopher, Gerald. Ryan Alexander Johnson. Seth Xavier Johnson. Timothy Johnson Jr. Zoe Bryce Johnson Kiff. Ryan Gregory Johnston. Dallas Louise Jones. Alyssa Emma George Lenya Morgan Joseph Jake Robert Justinski Kandra Chakria Camelsip. Joseph Michael Kayan. Ashley Grace Keith. Allison Barbara Kelly. Benjamin Stephen Kelly. Bethany Eileen Kennedy. Emily Kang. Peter Maroon Lieb. Grace Ann Erica Kleinbrow. Cadence Tatiana Knapp. Knapp. Jonathan Francis Peter Lang. Leah Ann Langell. Joshua Joseph LaPlaca. Seth David LaPlaca. Kerwensley Anthony LaRock.
Nicole Elizabeth LeBlanc. Allison Marie Legier. Haley Ray Leonard. Isaiah Dante Leonard. Andrew George Lindley. Matthew Michael Lortos. Andrew Jacob Lowell Hart. John Charles Lozanski. Selena Loida Lugo. Karina Michelle Lugo. Go, Karina! <laughs> Aiden Rowan Lynch. Tyler Kenneth Lynch. John Thomas Mahoney. Nove Marin Mailing. Rory Marie Mailing. Morgan Joseph Malone. Anthony Douglas Marignano. Matthew Reese Mobley Marcel. Delaney Ray Marcou. Elena Katerina Marinelli. Gavin Southwick Martin. Tristan Molson Martin. Mateus Martins. Alicia Mercedes Martinez. Both of your hands, I'll shake your hand as well. You're welcome. Alondra Martinez. Anais Martinez. Kaylee B. Martinez. (laughs) 
Olivia Grace Massandrea. Yerdi Antonio Mata Pena. Alexander Manuel Matos. Andrew James McDonough. John Martin McDonough. Brady Daniel McDonald. Brianna McIntosh. Charlie Jane McKenna. Andrew Duncan McKenzie. Avery Grace McLaughlin. Riley Elizabeth McLean. May Mead. Abby Julianne Menutol. Joanna Mercier. Fernanda Mitra Zamora. Catherine Alicia Monet. Sebastian James Moore. Colin Powell Morace. Christopher Joseph Moda. Thank you, Mr. Larson. Mr. Stores, please come up to present diplomas. Okay. Reina Isabel Mungia. Brittany Monroe. Hope Marie Murphy. Caden David Murray. Juan David Navarro. Layla Naret. Chloe Maureen Newman. Damari Nolasco. Felicity Elizabeth Norlin. Woo! 
Matthew Paul O'Brien. Rachel O'Neill. Kathy Ortega. Isaiah Antonio Cruz. Zachary Edward Uzian. Abigail Lee Owens. Ava Grace Palacio. Nicholas Joseph Pantages. Nathan Joseph Parker. Riley Jane Parker. Logan James Para. Thank you. Yeah, my, my weights are flying away. Juliana Iris Parsons. James Allen Paulette Jr. Isaac Richard Pereira. Samuel Lemus Pereira. Summer Elizabeth Pereira. Christopher Perez Sandoval. Selena Juliet Elaine Perez. Connor William Perry. Haley Nicole Perry. Lindsay Corinne Perry. Kate Angeline Petrasso. Isaiah Daniel Filia. Nicholas Frank Piazza. Elijah Pimentel. Dylan Anthony Hina. Danielis Nicole Pinales. Jeffrey Portillo. Rachel Nagy Pose. J. 
Jacob Wrench. Meredith Linnea Richards. Ariana Michelle Ridge. Juliet Bontno Riendo. Anthony Michael Rinaldi. Connor James Robbins. Mr. Stores, will you step aside for one, please? Mr. Domenici, please come back to the podium. Brady Robinson. Akiamus Roderick. Adriana Elizabeth Rodriguez. Kenny Abdiel Rosa Medina. Dylan Alexander Rosania. Alyssa Patricia Rose. Ella Grace Roy. Nathan Oscar Rubik. John William Rumley. Christopher Mark Russo. Thomas Samuel Russo. Kylie Nicole Sackett. Parker Justin Sackett. Jamima Christine Saintville. Danny Salguero. William Lawrence Saltmarsh. Mabel Annalie Sandoval. Kyle Christopher Sanford. Sean Michael Sankey Jr. Cooper Owen Schwamm. Reagan Christina Schwensfire. Ava Rose Shangra.
Dylan James Sharp. Jacob Wayne Sherman. Kelsey Elizabeth Sherry. Benjamin Michael Philip Siganoff. Callie Silva. Isaiah Owen Silva. Thank you, Mr. Stores. Mrs. Porto, please come up to present diplomas. Domingos Silvera Antunes. Ren Simnit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Christian Blake Simino. Yanni Franchisic Scordis. Robert Joseph Smedberg. Jalen Elizabeth Smith Dozier. Arjun Sodani. Arnav Sodani. Karina Yvette Sosa. Madeline Autumn Sulier. Evan Paul Souza. Austin James Souza. Thomas Owen Steigler. Joseph Xavier Stevenson. Iris Anastasia Storer. Cashel William Stuger. Hunter Owen Sturm. Brandy Louise Sullivan. Brandon Michael Sullivan. Thomas Soy. Rayana Swan. Jackson Hunter Sweeney. Yeah. 
Jonas W. Swenson. Owen James Tabor. Mrs. Porto, can you step aside for a moment while Mr. De Medici returns? Alexander Rose Terriel. On Tram Back. Maya Marie Theriel. Ryan Matthew Therian. Reed Michael Thompson. Zachary Sean Thornton. Bryce Daniel Thurber. Emilio Alejandro Ticus. Crossing as a family, Clarissa Elise Colon and Ricardo Dale Ticus. Miguel Torado Jr. Savannah Tom. Antonia Devin Torres. Isaiah Lavon Traore. Eris Tuplin. Yarelis Marie Umana. Angela Rose Vecchioli. Nathan James Vero. Avery Grace Vieira. Jaden Lynn Vieira. Jackson Antonio Viveros. Owen James Viveros Strumar. Laura Ashley Walsh. Michael Louis Ward. Congratulations. 
Frederick Gerard Wheaton. Madeline Micheline Wilson. Robert Michael Winkler. Alyssa Jade Woodward. Craig Woodward. Bryn Cameron Wright. Matthew Craig Wright. Mr. Sawyer, would you please come forward? Based on the recommendation of the faculty, I stand here before you to present the class of 2022. They are deserving of all the benefits, pleasures, and responsibilities that this diploma represents, and they await your certification. By the power vested in me, by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Attleboro School Committee, I hereby recognize that the diploma recipients here today have met all legal and state requirements. I now declare you graduates of Attleboro High School in the year 2022. Congratulations. Almost done. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Good night.